Hey YouTube, welcome back to Axis and Allies the Garrison. This is Detroit coming to you from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, New Jersey, with another episode of the YouTube Wars. It is episode 4.2, and it is Russia's turn, and Russia is under the command of VK Cowboy. Cowboy is doing his best at stopping uh, the German horde who have been invading Russia since round one. Okay, so Russia has been performing limit, limited counterattacks that have, in essence, uh, assisted Russia with its defense of the Soviet Union. However, the Red Army is under extreme pressure, especially because during the last turn, during the last German turn, Germany previously had taken uh, the Ukraine. During the last turn, it took Rostov, and now it's putting a lot of pressure on St Stalingrad itself. Now, Stalingrad is a victory city, and... If Stalingrad itself falls, it will be one point that will go then in favor of the Axis powers. And of course, VK Cowboy knows that there's no way that he could allow that to happen. So now the question that I have for VK Cowboy is as follows. What is he going to do? Is he going to continue performing limited okay, counterattacks on Germany's northern front? Or will he perform a, a strategic uh, retreat? Or redeployment of his forces and help with the defense of Stalingrad okay I'm going to guess that he's going to redeploy into Stalingrad because it makes sense okay you do not want Stalingrad falling to the Axis powers it's one point one victory city you do not want to lose and I have a feeling that that's exactly what he is going to do anyway guys let me know what you think and as always all right so let's go ahead with uh, Russia's turn Okay, these were the purchases that uh, Cowboy made for the Russians. The Russians uh, purchased three tanks, three armors, eight infantry. Okay, they also purchased uh, three uh, points worth of, uh, or IPCs worth of uh, uh, technolo technology developments. All right, and one IPC that they're going to use probably to move, not probably, but to move one of their minor industrial complexes. According to the BBR, Russia is the only country in the game that can move their minor industrial complexes at a price, and that price is one IPC. All right, so one IPC for the movement, three IPCs, all right, for the industrial technology development, eight infantry, and three armored units. All right, so let's go ahead with the battles, battles declared. The battles are, will be battle for uh, C-Zone 91, where you have the Russian submarine in C-Zone 105 at a movement of 1, and 2 will be attacking the German destroyer in C-Zone 91. All right. <clears throat> the battle for Bryansk. You have one artillery division, German, defending, you have a total of one, two. This armor is coming from from, uh, from Belarus, okay? And an additional two armor that are coming from Leningrad at a movement of two, one and two. So that's a total of four armor, one, two, four infantry coming from Russia, along with four additional artillery divisions coming in to the attack on Bryansk. So that's four artillery, four armor, four infantry attacking the single German artillery division that is defending. And right, then we have the battle for Western Ukraine. Now this, this is an interesting battle because, because Cowboy is only attacking with aircraft. So he's got two aircraft in Belarus at a movement of two. One, two, one, two, right? Let's put the die marker there showing how much they have in the fuel gauge left. Then you have the fighter in Novgorod, Leningrad, at a movement of one, two, and three. This fighter should have one movement left in its fuel gauge. I'm sorry, this fighter was also in Belarus. So that'll be two movements as well for that fighter. Okay, so all three fighters are attacking uh, Western Ukraine with, that is being defended by three German divisions. The interesting thing is that there are no ground units in this attack, and of course, Cowboy is risking his Air Force as a consequence. 
All right, uh, last but not least, the battle for Eastern Poland. You have one armor, one artillery, and one infantry division attacking the three artillery divisions in Eastern Poland as well. All right, so those are the four battles. All right, we'll be back shortly with the results of the order of battle. All right, so let's review the order of battle. Okay, so the battles that were just fought were as follows. The battle for Season 91, the German destroyer in Season 91 was sunk. It did not defend successfully. The Russian submarine is still alive. All right, the next battle, battle for Poland. All right, this battle was another uh, Russian victory. However, we must mention a couple of things. One is that the Germans, during the Russians, during their uh, development of their technology, did roll, okay, at least one five out of, uh, at least a five out of their, their three dies that they rolled. In order for them to get their technologies, they needed to roll at least a five or a six in their three die rolls. So they did get that and they do have their technology. And it turned out that Cowboy went with super tanks. With super tanks, the Russian tanks from now on can attack at four or less. So the die roll is four or less as a consequence of having that technology. So the battle went as follows. All three of the German artillery were destroyed, but the Russians had to pay a price for it. They also lost an artillery and one infantry division. The armor did get to survive though. Of course, this now becomes a Russian territory. Actually, it always was Russian. The only thing that now it's just a liberated Russian territory. All right, the second battle. Okay, this battle, again, another de defeat for the Germans. All three of the defending uh, German divisions were destroyed, but they were able to destroy or shoot down at least one of the Russian fighters that was attacking. This territory remains German because during the attack, the Russians did not send any infantry supported to support that attack as well. All right. Last but not least, the battle for Bryansk, the single German artillery division defending was destroyed. The Russians themselves lost one infantry division during this attack. All right, so let's go ahead with the non-combat movements. The two fighters that attacked in Western, actually two of the three fighters that attacked uh, Western Ukraine, one did not make it. The, the two that did survive will move at a movement of two, one and two. Okay, that's how many movements they have left in their fuel gauges back into Moscow, okay, into Russia, all right? Now, I did make a mistake earlier when I said that there was four infantry going in the attack in Bryansk. In all actuality, that was actually two infantry that had gone into that attack, okay? A good thing that I caught on to my error there. Instead, the two infantry that did not go into Bryansk will instead be moving south. One will be going into Tombov. The other infantry will be moving to Volgograd. This unit will be railroaded at a movement of two. Okay, right there. So one went to Tombo, uh, Tombov, the other one to Volgograd. The infantry division that was already in Volgograd will move south into the Caucasus. All right. Okay, I also must uh, mention uh, the minor industrial complex, all right, is being moved. Remember that uh, earlier during the purchase sequence uh, phase of the game, uh, Cowboy did pay for one IPC's worth uh, of uh, movement of an industrial complex. So this complex in Stalingrad is falling back and it's going to Samara. Okay, that's one of the interesting aspects of the BBR. The fact that minor industrial complexes can't move. And let's keep in mind, guys, that that is historically accurate because during the Second World War, the Russians did move their industry. They moved the industry behind the Ural Mountains because they knew that the eventually the Germans will be attacking and that they will be at war. So that's historically accurate, and the BBR accommodates that historical fact into the game. All right, so let's continue with our non-combat movements the, the AAA in Moscow will move into Bryansk as well. All right. The other AAA in Belarus will move into Bryansk. Okay. Now let's flip this. I'll take the German marker because this is now a liberated Russian territory. There you go. 
Okay. Two infantry divisions coming in from Leningrad will be moving south and will be stationed in Belarus. Okay. And I believe that does it for the non-combat movements uh, portion of the... All right, let's go ahead with the final placements of units. But before we do so, let's just make a correction that has to be made. It was only brought up to my attention after viewing Cowboy's uh, video a little bit further down the road. This um, uh, infantry division that was in Leningrad will move not and will not stop its movement in Belarus. It'll move one, two, and three, end up in Tambov. The infantry division that moved into Tambov instead will move into Bryansk. No, uh, yeah, Bryansk. All right, it's just a switch. And remember that this unit can move up to three time, three spaces because it can railroad. All right, so it could be railroaded into uh, a territory. All right, so let's go ahead then with the final placements of units. The Russians will be placing their three newly built armored units in Moscow, along with four infantry. Right, they will also place one infantry in Samara. By the way, I forgot to mention that any time <coughs> that a <coughs> excuse me, any time that you have an industrial complex that has been moved, its production capacity drops by one. So normally, this industrial complex could produce up to three units, but in this instance, it can only produce two because it was just moved from Stalingrad. So it can only produce just two units, not three. All right, so uh, three additional units will be placed in Leningrad. And that's it for the placements of movement. Okay, and I was also forgetting to mention that the Soviet Union enjoys the fact that it has Lend-Lease. Okay, uh, Cowboy rolled a three on a six-sided uh, six die, and he rolled eight for a tank. So Russia will get a tank that will be placed then in Leningrad. All right, so Russia will be collecting a total of 32 IPCs for this game, for this round, that uh, will be carrying over to round five. But before I let you guys go, I forgot to make one more non-combat movement for the Soviet Union. Soviet Union will be moving three infantry divisions from Korea into Manchuria. So in Manchuria, you'll have four Russian infantry divisions that will be occupying, not occupying, but will be uh, reinforcing that territory for the Chinese. All right, so it's been an interesting round for uh, the Soviet Union, for the Russians. Uh, things are definitely starting to heat up on the southern flank. Okay, I see that Cowboy is no longer as focused up in the north as he once was, and in part is, as I predicted, he has to reassess what he has in his southern flank. He has to protect his interests and that's why he has pivoted and has concentrated or focused the majority of his military assets in this region itself. Very interesting. All right, guys, it is the end of episode 4.2. As always, uh, let me know what your thoughts uh, and ideas are. Uh, do you think the strategies that, we're that we are currently using are working? Who do you believe is winning and who do you believe uh, is losing? Let me know. I'm curious. I want to know. And as always, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Guys, don't forget to bunker down and play. And by the way, it is now Japan's turn. I promise it's going to be a very interesting turn. So uh, don't miss the next episode, guys.